Welcome back to the Guzzy Sound Channel and episode 4 in the series all about my Project 9 analog modular synth which is uh, my DIY synth project and in this episode we're once again talking about voltage control oscillators, VCO this one is the second oscillator I built for this device and it's, it's a reverse avalanche oscillator it's based on the circuit from um, the Look Mum No Computer Sim Super Simple Oscillator I think he calls it the link's in the description you can go and look at what he's done there um, so what we're going to do we'll, we'll have a look at the back of the panel and have a look at um, one or two tweaks that I've done with this and then we'll crank it up and you can hear what it sounds like as a straight oscillator and then with a little bit of modification through one or two of the other modules in Project 9. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at how we put this together. This is the VCO panel out of the box. Let's have a look at the back of it. Okay, so quite a few things attached to this. That's the 555 VCO we talked about in the last episode. So you've got the 555 chip there, which is the oscillator, and then you've got a TL072 op amp there, which is buffering the output. I explained all that in the video. What we're looking at in this episode is this collection of boards here. So these. Um, so the bottom board, if we tip it up, so this board is the reverse avalanche oscillator. I explain how that's put together in my little boxes uh, series there's one there on the Avalanche 3 triple oscillator it's the super simple oscillator design from Look Mum No Computer so if you want to look at some of the theory behind that he's, he's a lot more knowledgeable on electronics than I am um, the problem with these and particularly at 9 volt 9 volt it would really at the bottom end of what will trigger one of these oscillators the output is pretty low compared to something like the 555 which has quite a, quite a lot of grunt at 9 volt so what I've done is we have a second circuit which is I've piggybacked it onto the oscillator circuit and this is an LM386 amplifier now all I've done is from the chips data sheet I've taken the circuit design for a 200 gain amplifier um, the thing sticking up here is a trim pot and all I've done I've put a thumb wheel on it so I, I didn't want to mess about with um, screwdrivers and things to set it up but that basically allows me to trim it so that I get the optimum output uh, from the uh, input from the oscillator and then of course the the oscillator on that circuit there I've got a Vactrol on there to provide the CV input again that's the detail of that is all explained in the other videos um, but also what I've done on this one is I've used two different capacitor values and that is what this switch here is so I can go from uh, a low frequency range for the oscillator to a high frequency range at the flick of a switch and you'll hear what that sounds like when I plug this thing back into its box and crank up the avalanche oscillator we've seen what it looks like let's hear what it sounds like I'm coming straight out of the output 
from the oscillator just into a small amplifier. What you're hearing now is straight output with the range switch set to low. So almost LFO frequencies down there. You can see the LED flashing away there. But as I said, I've actually got an alternative capacitor arrangement set up which will give me So, there you go, much higher range That's the basic oscillator. If we put some CV input into it to trigger it, um, you can't see, or you can just see it on here. There's, I've got the beat step connected into it, so I'm, I'm just sending a CV signal from the beat step straight into the oscillator, and that. <laughs> signal from the beat step going through the van troll that's mounted on the uh, across the pot on the oscillator and that's set to low and that's the kind of effect you get when you uh, hook it to the high setting setting but if we want to kind of uh, be a bit cleverer in how we trigger it if I take the output from the oscillator put it into what is a Vactral VCA and trigger that with the gate from the beat step so we've got gate from the beat step triggering the VCA and CV from the beat step triggering the oscillator That's kind of where we've got to now. So we're starting to shape the sound a little bit more. If we want to play around with the sound a little bit more, what we can do, if we take the output from the VCA and put it into what at this end of the box and we'll talk about these in a future episode are actually um, passive these are passive low pass this passive low pass filter um, like I say I'll talk about that in a future episode but for now if you want to hear what it sounds like mm -hmm. bit of sound shaping with it. But if you want to 
do some more clever shaping what we can do is if we take the trigger from the VCA and put it into the gating on an envelope and then take the CV out of the envelope to trigger the VCA we can now start to shape the sound even more so changing the attack With a few simple, a very simple oscillator, some fairly basic modules, and remember, all this is all running on a simple 9 volt DC system. And stick around for future episodes, and you'll find out how I put together the envelope generator, how we put together the Vactrol VCAs, how we put together the passive low pass filters and one or two other little bits and bobs that we've got on the system here and hey I'm no electronics expert if I can do it then I'm sure you can so go on have a go build your own